In the first three parts of the story of Black Tusk, we discovered their origins, their knowledge of green poison, their invasion of DC, their plan to get broad spectrum antivirals, perfusion by reactor, and a virologist known to operate it, and how Black Tusk used rogue agents to further their cause. Their involvement in the penultimate battle with Aaron Keener on Liberty Island at the end of Warlords of New York set off the events that kickstarted season 1 through 4. In this episode, the fourth part of the story of Black Tusk, we will go over season 4 and its developments and answer the following questions. Who is Natalia Sokolova? Why did Fei Lao disavow the division and go rogue? And what was Lao's plan with President Alice? That and much more will be answered in this faction brief. Before continuing the video, as an added way to increase my income on YouTube, I have joined affiliate programs of companies and products that I support. The affiliate links can be found in the description. You can support me by using the supporter creator code MastermindsHD in the Epic Games Store and by clicking on or buying games and other products through the Kingwin and Amazon links. On top of that, I link to each of the products I use in my setup as a content creator, so if you're considering using these products, you can support me by following the link. I will only recommend products and services I use myself. Thanks for your support and enjoy the video. After Schaefer was critically injured and extracted by the division, Lau was the last one of the current task force still on mission. She created her own squad. Bridget Viper Douglas, Felix Kestrel Sokolov, Dustin Magnus Xavier and Alicia Cersei Coswald. Agent, we got a new cell and this one's gonna hurt. We've got a line on Lau. She's been working with a team of four X-Division operatives, recruited by the Black Tusk, some more recently than others. Since she left Manhattan, we've discovered Lau has been recruiting agents. We have no intel on her objective, but we've pieced together who she's been working with. Bridget Douglas, call sign Viper. She's a chemical logistics and supply specialist. Dropped off our radar not long after being activated in the first wave. Felix Sokolov, Call sign Kestrel, specialized in combat medical support and escort duties. Medical degree from a top tier school. His family business gave him enough clout to make the division ranks, and he's made the most of it. Black Tusk jumped at the chance to recruit him. Justin Xavier, call sign Magnus, did two tours in Afghanistan before being recruited by the division, and subsequently Black Tusk. Specialized in infiltration and wet work. Got his nickname and his discharge from inner squad wrestling matches. Don't get too close. That's not a fight you'll win. Alicia Coswald, call sign Cersei, former division agent turned Black Tusk. She's pragmatic and willing to work with anyone. We know she's the one who recruited Lau, or at least led her to Schaefer. We think she might be gathering intel for whatever Lau's planning. If Lau is personally leading this team, you can bet she's planning something big. She's been careful not to pop up on our radar. Coming out into the open like this, she wants us to know what she's up to. Let's not disappoint her agent. Bridget Viper Douglas is the only child of Charles Douglas, the co-founder of Douglas and Harding, one of the military equipment companies in the game. She grew up on a secluded estate in the Scottish Highlands. After attending university, Douglas completed an eight-year stint in the SAS before taking a position in Douglas and Harding as a logistics and supply specialist. When Green Poison hit, she was immediately recruited by Black Tusk, and despite her father's objections, she joined Black Tusk. SAS. That's impressive. Logistics and supply specialist? Not that impressive. You shouldn't do that. Do what? Sell yourself short. You are impressive. You didn't have to join the services. Rich girl like you had other options. Just because my father has money, it doesn't mean I'm some spoiled rich girl. I can take care of myself. Your record proves that. You joined the Black Tusk in December? That's correct. Before you were activated. I was never activated. Guess they're still saving some of us for the real end times. Does Schaefer know your division? He never asked, and I didn't think it was worth bringing up until it was a problem. Smart. I like smart women. Me too. Viper's background as a former SES operator and daughter of Charles Douglas makes her interesting. She was recruited by Black Tusk in December before division agents were activated and she actually never was activated. According to her this was because they were saving her for some of the real end times, partially suggesting there is a third wave. 
On the other hand, it could suggest there are parties in the government that had knowledge of both Black Tusk's plan and the division. I'm best in a support role. You don't want to lead your own team. I prefer to be in a support role. I get that. Some people aren't cut out to make the hard choices. Oh, that's not what I'm worried about. What are you worried about? Being responsible for my team's life. You'll make sacrifices to save them. No? That I'll consider their deaths an acceptable loss. We know what we signed up for. We assume this is a suicide mission. If you make it back home, that's the unexpected outcome. You worried about survivor's guilt? Can't be worried about something you can't control, and every mission I come back from, I never feel guilty. Not about being the one that comes back. Other shit. Sure. But never that I survived. How's it feel? Good. Weird. I like being in charge, but yeah, it's, it's weird being the one people are looking to for guidance. Your team speaks highly of you, Viper. You're a natural leader. Likeable, kind, tough when you need to be. They respect you, but aren't intimidated by you. Cool? That's hard to pull off. Especially for a woman. Thanks. I try not to be a bitch. I'm still working on that one. You're sure he's at the White House? That's what Kelso said. He's running a shooting range and drinking dandelion coffee from a very fancy espresso machine. Huh? Well, that sounds like my dad. <laughs> He's doing great. Found a way to make himself useful. He was lucky. Never caught the virus and still has all his parts. Aside from the dandelion, instead of his regular Kobe Luwak, it sounds like his life hasn't changed much. He's still in the lab, getting people to test his equipment and probably making them feel really insecure about their accuracy. You miss him? Of course. But when something like this happens, you have to do what you think is right. I'm glad we each found something. Even if he is actively making my life harder. Which, yeah, that hasn't really changed much either. Felix Kestrel Sokolov is the youngest child and only son of his later father, Russian businessman Alexei Sokolov. His older half-sister Natalia Sokolova was left behind in Russia to run the family business when her father moved his American mother and child to the United States. Sokolov's father forced him to enlist with the Navy and while deployed, his mother was convicted of murdering his father. When his tour was over, he studied medicine at John Hopkins University before being recruited by Black Dust. You were a good agent, Felix. What made you leave the division? Family. I get that. You lose someone? My sister. The virus? No. Nope. Rikers. I couldn't keep her safe. Budget cuts. Well, you'll never have that problem with Black Dusk. Natalia will get us anything we need. Natalia? My sister. She runs this entire operation. Anything you need, I can get it. You don't think it's weird she'd let you work in the field? It's not the safest place for a kid like you. You've read my profile, you know I've served before. It's why the division recruited me. Well, that and I'm sure they got a family discount on those knee pads you were wearing when Schaefer brought you in. You asking the other candidates this much about their families? Only when it's relevant. So what else do you want to know? How close are you with your sister? Not as close as I'd like. It's hard. She grew up in Russia. I didn't really get to know her until after our father died. That was what, six or seven years ago? Six? What does it matter? Nothing. Just, that's around the same time she started Black Tusk. So? Oh, nothing. I'm, I'm just thinking out loud. It's interesting that your father dies, she reconnects or connects with you. She inherits the company and builds this PMC. It just seems like... Never mind. I'm seeing conspiracies where they probably don't exist. My sister loves me. I'm sure she does. When we lost our father, she was allowed to come from Russia for the funeral. It's not that hard to understand. That in that moment, she was there to help me. She put me through school. She got me this job. She saw how agents were dying, and she sacrificed her men to bring me in and protect me. You don't do that if you don't care about someone. Kestrel's relationship with his sister is tough to analyze as we don't know much about it, but I share Lau's concerns. Although on the one hand she seems protective of him and paid for his education, on the other hand she could use him as an inside man within the division. Whatever it alludes to, it suggests that Black Tusk had knowledge of the division prior to the outbreak. Kestrel, get your team ready. Got an assignment? Nothing too big, just need you to escort a VIP. Babysitting duty? Seriously, don't you have some grunts who can do this? Trust me, 
This escort is too important to leave to a rookie. Well, now you've got my attention. You ready for this? Absolutely. You don't mind not knowing who the target is? I trust Faye. And frankly, she's right. We've had too many leaks. She's smart to keep this one close to the vest. Do you know who the target is? I've got my suspicions, but I'm not going to speculate. I think it's Kelso. Okay, Sparky. Don't strain that big brain of yours. <laughs> it's still unknown who Kestrel and Viper were supposed to escort and unknown how it's relevant to the story. Dustin Magnus Xavier was recruited by the division after his second tour in Afghanistan. He was approached by the division when he received the Valorous Unit Award for showing extraordinary heroism when his unit was attacked by an IED and ambushed. After being activated in Washington DC, Magnus found himself questioning his mission and found the equipment and resources being allocated to agents insufficient to handle the crisis. He was approached by Schaefer. Magnus recognized the kindred spirit of another true patriot and enlisted with Black Tusk. You get it. We're the same. You're a patriot. You served your country same as me. We've seen what can happen when a weak leader rises to power. We have. And I know that we can't rely on the government to save us. This thing moves too fast. You have to be agile. The wheels of government roll too slowly for something like this. They're trying to use a scalpel when what we need is a sledgehammer. I can be that hammer. Xavier, or Xavier, or Javier. Xavier. Thanks. It annoys me when people don't know how to say Lao, but have no problem with McGuire, McMahon, O'Shea, and Kavanaugh. Fisher, Schneider, Muller might have something to say about that. Your CO was German, right? Very. Third generation. Kept assisting his family was never Nazis, which, you know. <sighs> The more you protest, the more likely you are exactly that thing. Boys, let's show the lady what she's won. Your unit in Afghanistan. Yeah. You got hit by an IED. It happens. Any residual trauma? Just the normal. Gotta make sure it wasn't for nothing. That's how they got me. Just in case. We need you to join us. Just in case. Most likely you'll never be activated, but just in case. You survived the worst. You can handle this. No one can handle this. We're just here to minimize the damage. And hope there's something left when we're through. And if there isn't, we will be the ones to rebuild it. Looking forward to working with you, Magnus. I don't know why you keep pitching me your dumbass ideas. My ideas aren't dumb. Who better than the people in the field? The ones using the gear to tell you what they want and need out of the gear. Fine. Okay. So, like, stay with me. Think about it. Think about what? Give me a second. Okay, picture it. You're out in the field. You've got hostiles on your right and left. Yeah, so it's a Tuesday. You see an opportunity to run and slide into cover. Uh -huh. But there's mud. Yeah, somewhere in D.C. Lots of mud. Got it. And you've only got one pair of pants. So what do you want? What if your knee pads had quick deploy shin and hip guards? <sighs> You want my sister to make knee pads that have quick deploy, sliding shin, and hip guards so you don't have to wash mud off your pants? Yeah. Think how awesome that would be. Uh, yeah. Mm, I'm not calling her for that. Magnus? Sup, Viper? Uh, gross. What? I just said sup. Yeah, I know what sup means. Hey, hey, you don't mean nothing. Unless you want it to mean something. Gross. Hey. You don't have to be like that. And you don't have to be a disgusting human being, but here we are. I hope you get eclipsed. Oh, that's fucked up. I just said sup, and you wish that keener shit on me? You're cold, Viper. I thought we were friends. Alicia Cersei Coswald was recruited by the division after doing a stint in the army and going to school on the GI Bill when she was 23 years old. She recently graduated college and had secured her first job as a high school English teacher when the Green Poison was released. Coswell joined Black Tusk when she realized that the situation on the ground was hopeless. While being held prisoner and interrogated by Lau, Coswell allegedly recruited Lau to Black Tusk. She get anything out of you? Nothing we didn't want her to. Is she gonna be a problem? Pretty sure she's an asset. You think she's ready? She's desperate. A little push and she's one of us. Is that a good idea? No one has better access to the Division than Faye. We bring her to our side, we'll know where all the bodies are buried. Then it's just a matter of time before they fall and we rise. I can't believe we're working together again. <sighs> it's 
Sorry about the black site. I get it. You didn't know what this was. You're right, I had no idea what this was. I'm starting to understand, though. I'm glad you signed on. I always liked you, Faye. I like you too, Alicia. Use my call sign, Cersei. Makes it less weird. Alicia's too personal. Reminds me of life before this shit. Fair enough. You want a call sign for this op? No. It's better if I remember where I came from. What do you need? Just a location and schedule. Should be a piece of cake for you, Cersei. Whose location and schedule do you need? Chicken Hawk. That's need to know, Faye. You know that. I need to know. What are you wanted for? Just need to make sure that he's not in any danger. Getting rumblings about transports and mobile units outside of DC going through Maryland. Just want to confirm that Chicken Hawk's not in any danger. Schaefer really knows how to pick them. Hey, he picked me. We're different. His original squad, complete fuck-ups. You're not wrong. How do you lose the Pentagon? How do you lose a bioreactor? You know, I can't... I still can't tell if it's incompetence or a leak. A leak? Someone on the inside leaking intel to the division. Why would you say something like that? Makes more sense than Wyvern losing the antivirals and random agents getting lucky. Wyvern wasn't stable on the best of days. For an elite squad, our comms should be secure. We shouldn't be having these leaks. Isaac's good, but he's not that good. There's no way that we should be compromised like this. Maybe someone programmed a backdoor into our comms relay, just pumping intercepted radio to some data analyst in a basement under the Lincoln Memorial. Makes sense. Viper, I was kidding. Jesus, you need to get laid. You're wound too tight. <sighs> you might be right. But I wouldn't let any of these chuckle fucks touch me. They're not exactly my type. Cersei, after her interrogation in Lower Manhattan, was the one that convinced Lau that Black Tusk could provide that which she needed. Indirectly, she is responsible for Lau disavowing the division and joining Black Tusk. Although Black Tusk's failures can be explained through character shields or plot armor, in order for the story to progress, the division had to be successful, meaning Black Tusk had to lose. Cersei, although she was kidding, explains it as someone that programmed a backdoor into Black Tusk's comms relay, pumping intercepted radio to some data analyst in the basement under Lincoln Memorial. That would explain a lot. The division, one way or another, picked up the chatter on their comms. Lao's location was unknown, but their agents were located easier and the division managed to track them down and eliminate them. Feeling the division closing in, Lao decided to go ahead with her plan. She had worked her way up Black Tusk ranks and would personally oversee the collaboration between Black Tusk and President Ellis. To legitimize her loyalty, she played her part and set up a meeting with Ellis in Camp White Oak. This is our chance shape history. I couldn't agree more, Mr. President. You said it yourself. Somebody has to step up. I'm willing to take on that challenge. If we're going to get this country back on track, we have to be willing to do things that won't be popular. I know that you and Schaefer had a rather contentious relationship. I hope our collaboration will be more efficient. I look forward to meeting you in person. That can be arranged. Excellent. See you soon, Mr. President. <sighs> what an asshole. Discovering their plans, the Division launched a rushed operation and traveled to Camp White Oak. With their boots on the ground, Black Tusk Chatter confirmed Alice and Lau were meeting in the presidential cabin. Before entering the cabin, Lau spoke directly to the agents. Agent, I know you're there. Silent, but always listening. It's over. Alice is dead. You don't have to do this. You can let me go. Identification confirmed. President Andrew Ellis. Vital signs, zero. Status, ceased. Meeting adjourned, Mr. President. Lau liquidated President Ellis. After the division failed to protect its civilians, restore order and save her sister, Lau's mission became to bring down the division and this would be how she would do it. The division, although he was a traitor to his country, answered to the president and he would give them legitimacy. Lau tried destroying the division's image as saviors of the United States and paint them as a rogue agency seeking power. Black, Black Tusk, Tusk soldiers in Camp White Oak. Oak. This is Fei Lau. Lau. Division, division agents killed President Ellis. Ellis. Our mandate, mandate is clear. clear. Everything, Everything we, we stand, stand for is threatened, threatened by their, their actions. actions. Do not, Do not let, let them, them escape. escape. 
As the division continued their manhunt for Lao and fought through waves of Black Tusk soldiers, a Chinook helicopter attempted to extract Lao from the landing zone. Unexplained electrical errors prevented it from taking off and after the division destroyed the rotor blades, Lao was forced into a final confrontation with the agents that up until that point might have been the closest thing she could call a friend. It was time to take her other eye and it wouldn't end well for Lao. After the battle as Lao had fallen, the division discovered audio recordings directed at Roy Benitez and Paul Rhodes, explaining her choices. Hey Roy, this is hard for me. This is probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do. You trusted me and I loved you for that. It broke my heart having to keep secrets like this from you, but I knew, I knew if I told you what I was planning, you would try to stop me. And if you tried to stop me, there was no way I could have gone through with any of it. There's no way I could have interrogated Alicia or met Schaefer or gone with him. But I had to do this, Roy. I had to. We were losing. We lost the authority. We lost the trust of the people we were trying to protect. Without trust, we have nothing. It doesn't matter how many good or bad things we do if no one trusts you to get the job done. And with Schaefer and Ellis, we lost the legitimacy. We lost the ability to say we are on mission. Hell, the only one who agreed we were still on mission was Isaac. I knew what I had to do. All I needed was access, and I couldn't get that unless I joined them, or at least unless I could make them believe I joined them. I'm sorry I couldn't tell you why. I'm sorry I had to break your trust like that. But I hope, I, I pray, you'll forgive me someday. If you don't, I might have to come haunt your ass until you do. Low out. I know, you hate me, you never trusted me. You probably never liked me and only moderately tolerated me. It's okay. That's okay. We didn't have to be friends. And I know you probably think I'm a bitch, though you would never actually say that. Not to my face, at least. I think the reason we never really got along is we're too similar. We're stubborn. We care too much. And frankly, we're both pretty guarded people. We've both lost people. And we didn't deal with that as well as we could have, I guess, but I hope that when I'm done, you'll understand why I did what I had to do. I don't expect you to agree with it, but I hope you understand. I'm not sorry it went down like this, but I'm sorry I couldn't tell you why. Black Tusk's origins and timeline are extensive and in-depth. This was the fourth part of the four-part series on the story of Black Tusk. The story should have wrapped up and the questions that it created should have been answered at this point. Questions like who is Natalia Sokolova? What global organizations are backing Black Tusk? Who are the hunters and are they in fact working with Black Tusk? What is Black Tusk's plan now that President Alice is murdered? And these are just a few of the questions that haven't been answered. All I had to work with were the audio recordings and the one echo, but most of these seem like quickly put together collectibles and add very little to nothing to the story. It's incredibly disappointing to see a franchise with such potential in its setting, story and lore to be ruined. Massive Entertainment switched to Project Avatar and Star Wars, whether this was directed by Ubisoft or not, bears a striking resemblance to the writers on Game of Thrones, absolutely fucking up the last season to move on to other projects and in my opinion that's unacceptable, you can't do that to your fanbase. Although I had little hope the game would pick up after seeing the developer or publisher's treatment of the game with the introduction of seasons, they still let me down. I mean, the audio recordings for Lau and Alice were honest to god recycled from audio recordings and cutscenes that appeared earlier in the game. I hope Massive would pull the game off live support as the vegetable it had become, but apparently they are still doing a year 3 and possibly a year 4. Even though they had planned to halt production on the game at this point, without discussing it with us anyway. On the one hand I want to say goodbye to the franchise, like many have done before me, but I feel like I owe it to you guys to see if whatever Massive releases at the end of this year is worth covering. With The Division not being this successful anymore and Call of Duty not doing that well for me, I'm looking for new content and I will out my frustrations in another video, it might have appeared already or I might still do it and there I'll suggest some games I could cover that you guys might be interested in. 
But as always, thank you guys very much for watching. As always, it's very much appreciated. The creation of these videos is very time consuming from writing the script to designing the motion graphics. If you like these types of videos and want to support me in continuing creating, there are several things you can do. Liking or disliking, depending on what you thought of the video, other than views, this shows me how much you like the content I put out. Subscribing reinforces your support and shows me you want more videos. Leaving interactive comments or feedback reminds me how I'm not just doing it for myself and shows how I can improve. Another way to support me is to join the channel and become a member for one, five or ten dollars. Other than badges and emojis, members will have early access to uploads of the large projects such as short films and large lore videos. And with that in mind, I want to give a special thanks to my supporters, to the members of my channel. To Monty Lambert for being the first tier 2 member, and to Khalil Cheeks, Nervous Wrecked, Sparky22, Carsten Block, Sal Martinez, and Jack Pony for being tier 1 members of the channel. Your support means a lot. And the last way, as I mentioned at the start of the video, you can support me by using affiliate links and creator codes mentioned in the description. I'm invested in creating this brand and making it work, so the more support I gain, the more time and energy I can invest in YouTube to turn it into a full-time job. In turn, this will result in more frequent uploads, higher quality content and an amazing community. But however you choose to support me, I will be creating and uploading content because I like what I do. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.